Hi, my name is David Day of the Day Photographic Art, and today we're going to talk about creative lighting for abstract intentional camera movement art generated in a studio setting. As you know, a lot of photography is about capturing the light. If we capture the light well, we end up getting rewarded with a good photograph. If we don't capture the light well, well, you can just throw that image into the trash can. I became aware of the critical importance of lighting in ICM photography during my early work experiments with tissue paper and plastic bags using natural light as a backlight through blue plastic bags. During these experiments, I discovered that small lighting differences can create big differences in the final appearance and feel of any given piece of work. Most recently, my experiments have been with backlighting using LED lamps, so a lot of this video today is going to be centered around that concept and use of those techniques. But in this video, we'll also talk about the hardware and platforms that I use to create scenes to photograph, the types of lights available for background lighting, and positioning of lights for effect. We're also going to talk about the unique and different qualities of tissue paper and plastic bags and how to use these for effect in a given, any given scene. We're also going to talk about how I shoot scenes in ICM backlit in the studio. And we're going to talk about how to refract light for even more dramatic, inf dramatic effect in your final image. Last but not least, we're going to talk a little bit about post-processing, but I'm not going to cover that in great detail because I covered that in some of my earlier videos and that has not changed a lot. So with that, I'm excited that you're here today. I'm excited that we can do this together and I hope you get something out of it. Before we get too far along, let's talk a little bit about the hardware that makes up the studio that I shoot these scenes in. My studio is a pretty simple affair. It's nothing more than a wooden frame box. It's about three feet long, about four feet tall, and about two feet deep. And I have some strings attached to the top of this box with a couple of fasteners so that if I want to dangle some things down into the scene to create a, a little bit of an illusion of suspended items, I can do that. I also have a little 25 watt lamp here that I've attached a snoot to and that allows me to highlight any given areas of the scene that I may want to highlight. I find that I'm not using that too much though in backlit photography. Now on the bottom of this box, I have a string of LED lights. Let's turn those on here for a minute. And you can see the LED lights are here. We'll get into this a little bit later, but I can change the colors of these lights very easily with this little remote that I've got here. A couple of things I didn't want to do. Uh, I did not want to crush these lights because they are a little bit flimsy. And uh, so to avoid that problem, I created this little device right here. It's nothing more than a wooden frame with some plexiglass covering it and a wooden frame back. Now this is designed so that it sits right on top of these LED lights. So there's about a two inch distance between the lights and the plexiglass. There we go. And this does a couple of things for me. Number one, it protects the LED lights so that I'm not 
placing things directly on top of the LED lights. The second thing that it does for me, which is really kind of interesting, is it creates some really, really nice refraction of the lights so that the lights tend to start to diffuse out. Now, if I want to diffuse these lights a little bit more, there are a couple different things that I have. I have multiple colors of plastic sheets, and you can see that uh, diffuses that light quite nicely. Or if I want to start out with a white background, I have a piece of white sheeting that I can lay over here that can diffuse it that way. So I start to get some more, some more uh, diffusion here in the whole process and then I can stack things and layer things on top of here. So to create my scene, I'll put a couple of plastic bags in there, maybe a little bit of blue. I really love these charcoal gray bags because they create a real interesting translucent effect. And here's a little bit darker one, so that if I want a dark area over here, I can do that. One of the things that I'm very careful about is to make sure that I've got all of the lights covered so that I don't have any random light trails impacting my scene. Now, once I get this set up, I can shoot it from the side, I can shoot it up over like this, and one scene will create a whole plethora of different images uh, by shooting it at different angles and at uh, different spots throughout the scene. I also have this back piece here which we talked about, and sometimes I'll put some LED lights back there. So if I want to create an illusion of a depth of field, I can put something back there to diffuse those lights and then go from down up and that creates a really, really good depth of field image for me. So that's basically the way the setup is uh, done. And next we're going to talk a little bit about the LED lights and uh, what uh, goes into putting all of that together. Okay, let's talk now for a while about lights and lighting. The good news when it comes to lights is that there are a million choices out there, so I'm sure you're going to find something that can work for you. The bad news is that there are millions of choices out there and you can spend a heck of a lot of money on lights before you get to something that's going to work well in backlit ICM photography. My first uh, trials in this area were with uh, two lights and that was with this flashlight that had a little focus and zoom feature on it and this uh, under counter accent light, it's called a hockey puck, that would light up a counter and I was mounting it under my tissue paper and my plastic bags to illuminate that way. Unfortunately, these two options had a lot of limitations. First off, they were way too bright. And secondly, they concentrated the light in one focused area. As a consequence, I found that almost all of my photographs that I were taking had blown out highlights and shadows that were way too black. So these lights didn't work and I abandoned them and went out to the internet and started searching my different lighting options. And what I landed on were these little 12 inch strips of LED lights. Now these LED lights can come in uh, multiple formats and if you want to see what they look like before going out and purchasing some, you can go to either Lowe's or Home Depot and they both carry Govi lights now. Govi is a manufacturer of a lot of these LED lights and they have them in all sorts of crazy configurations so you can look at them in the uh, look at them locally before you make a decision to spend your money on lighting these LED lights come in strips of anywhere from 12 inches up to 64 feet. Now, if you're talking about 64 feet of LED lighting, you're talking about lighting a whole room. And unless you're looking for something like that in a really big studio, I can't recommend the really big lights. I started out with something that was a 16-foot strip of lights. And unfortunately, that was too big for this application, too. So I settled with the 12-inch uh, strip. Now these lights have a couple of interesting features to them. First, they come with a USB plug, so you can plug them directly into your computer or you can plug them into a cell phone charger. So that's really pretty cool. The second thing that they uh, ha feature that they have is LED lights 
emit very little heat compared to an incandescent lamp. So if you're in a shoot and you've got your tissue paper or your plastic bags right up against these LED lights and you forget to turn them off, you're not going to be creating a fire hazard, which is always really important. We don't want to be starting any fires with our photography. The third feature that I really like about most of these LED lights is they come in multiple colors. So you've got the ability to uh, turn them on, and I've got these in red right here right now. I can change them to orange, I can change them to yellow, I can change them to white, and so on and so forth. You definitely want to get a set of lights that's got this remote control on it. They've also got this auto feature that allows the lights to uh, go from color to color, and it, you can base it on uh, what sounds are coming out of the room, or you can have it just rotate through the colors. And you can see here I've got it keyed to my voice right now. It's really fun to shoot in this mode because what you can do with a three to four second exposure is you can rotate your camera as the lights change so you can get some really strange combinations of lights as a consequence. So I highly recommend the lights that have uh, the remote with them. The lights that I use are called Hit Lights, the Eclipse Kit. I got this on Amazon, and they're pretty neat. You can, in that kit, you get three 12-inch strips, and you get three connectors that allow you to daisy, train, daisy chain these strips together by plugging them together. And with that option, you can have areas in your scene that are highlighted with the LED lights. And because these don't have any lights on them, you could have areas that are a little darker. And that way you can control light and shadows pretty well. And because it's only a 12 inch strip, it's not going to overpower it with light the way a 16 foot or a 64 foot strip would. So I really, really recommend these. Now, one thing you have to be careful of is these, although they're flexible, you can flex them so much that you can break these little soldering joints on the resistors here. And if you break those soldering joints on the resistors, it can cause the whole light strip to fail. So be very careful with bending them. The other thing I found is very interesting that you might find interesting as well is you've probably seen these before. This is a little portable light box for shooting uh, still photography of ceramic figurines, jewelry, and things like that. And they come with an LED ring mounted in one side. and They're usually just in white and they allow you to adjust the uh, brightness of those rings, as you can see as I'm doing here. Well, what I did after shooting uh, my backlit scenes in this for a while was I got rid of the box because I wanted something bigger, but I salvaged out the light, I salvaged out the LED light, and if I want something in the background that looks circular with some highlights around it, I'll take a piece of tissue or a piece of plastic and I'll stuff it into that ring and you can see there there are areas of light and shadow the ring is showing up as a shadow and then put that back at the back of my uh, scene that I've created and when I rotate that can create something that looks like a planet, a star, a sun or something along that of, of that sort. I really like that feature. So that's something else that's just an aside that uh, I found works really well for my photography. So that's basically it about lighting. Uh, there, as I said, there are a lot of choices out there. So if you find something that works really, really well for you, let, let me know because I'm always on the lookout for new ways to light these uh, photographs that I'm taking. The next thing that I want to do is construct a scene that I can shoot, and I'm going to use both tissue and plastic in this scene. I've already created part of it. As you can see, I've got uh, the LEDs set to a nice warm yellow, 
If I wanted, I could change those to uh, to uh, cool white or red, but I like yellow in this case. And I've got my ring set up back here. I might increase the uh, that a little bit, increase the brightness. And you can see I've got this ring covered in a purple t piece of tissue paper, and I've got it slightly offset so that when I shoot this scene, I can catch some of this light that's on this side of the uh, on this side of the scene. It might also be beneficial to put a piece of tissue paper back in the back there for that. Okay, so that's the basic scene. Now what we want to do is I want to continue to uh, construct it with tissue and plastic bags. There are two suggestions. I have when you're going to do these. The first is to think 3D. Don't think just about taking all your tissue and your plastic bags and laying them flat on the uh, piece of uh, acrylic or whatever type of stand you're using. Think about using little structural elements to make it three-dimensional because once you make it three-dimensional it ends up getting more depth of field to it than it would otherwise and it looks a little bit more interesting. The second thing that I would recommend uh, to do with it is to uh, not put too much clutter into it. It's very easy to get to a place where you've got so much tissue and so much plastic bags going on in here, light refracting all over the place, that your final image can become uh, cluttered with too many colors, too many variations of light and so on and so forth. So it uh, is to your advantage to think about keeping these things simple. So another thing that uh, I wanted to mention that I've recently been doing is I've got this four inch crystal ball here. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do with this is it's going to serve two purposes. Number one, it's going to make this image three dimensional. And number two, as you can probably see there, it's going to uh, reflect these, uh, some of these LED lights up through it. Now watch what happens when I take one of these light charcoal gray plastic bags and put it on top of here. And if I had a little more time, I would hang this up above there. You can see here how it's refracting that image. So I'm going to put that in there and leave that just like that. Then I'm going to take piece of blue plastic, put it back here for a little bit of an accent. And one of the things I'm going to try here, I don't know if that will work or not, is a little piece of uh, yellow tissue paper back there to catch some of the light coming off of this ring. And then I'm going to take, let's see, this was a grocery shopping bag. And I'm going to put that right over here to fill in that area. Okay. And that's how I'm going to construct my initial scene. And if uh, after I take a few shots with this, it doesn't work out, I'll just change it all around, move things around until I get to the place where I'm photographing something that uh, I find interesting, I find that I can work with and develop, and then I'll just shoot the heck out of it for about 100 shots or so. Let's talk a little bit about post-processing. I'm not going to go through a tutorial on post-processing here today because it's basically the same as what I put into my earlier videos on intentional camera movement photography in the studio using wires and plants as subjects. So if you want to take a look at the details, uh, please go to one of those videos on my YouTube channel. There are a couple of things worth mentioning though, and the first is highlights. In this type of photography, it's easy to get highlights that are too bright 
And when that happens, you've got to tone them down some way to balance them relative to the rest of the uh, image. There are a couple ways to do that. And what I suggest doing is a combination of masking followed by adjustment of the brightness in that masked area. Do this as opposed to burning that area using the burn tool in Photoshop or Lightroom. Because when you burn out a highlight, you tend to introduce mud into that. And if you've got too many highlight areas in your, in, in your image, you can end up ruining the entire image as a consequence of burning it. The other area, things that I wanted to talk about in post-processing are saturation, texture, clarity, and sharpening. They are the mainstay of ICM, particularly the saturation, the texture, and the clarity to adjust for the washout that inevitably occurs whenever you are moving a camera sensor across a scene. And in terms of sharpening, that is a really interesting one with this type of photography. If you look closely, particularly at a plastic bag that has got some translucence to it, it has a number of ridges and crinkles into it. And when you use the sharpening tool appropriately, on these photographs, you can create some very interesting texture in your final images. So learn to use the sharpening tool appropriately. Don't overuse it, but used appropriately, it can create some really interesting textured images. As far as good bag sources go, well, any shopping bag uh, that has any lettering on it is a great uh, bag to do with this type of photography. I, some of my favorite ICM images are from shopping bags that have some very small lettering on them. And I put them in photographs, and I get a real kick out of watching people try to read the lettering on those images from the, from the shopping bags. Also, small trash bags, the one and a half gallon size, are really, really good. They come in multiple different colors. This is a nice uh, pale green one. And importantly, this uh, gray translucent one is the uh, one and a half gallon uh, sized uh, trash bag. And that, that's worth going to the grocery store to pick up a couple of those because they are really, really great for this. The other thing that is really good is the doggy do bags that you find in pet stores. For whatever reason, the doggy do bag manufacturers put them in multiple vivid colors, and they're about that big, and you cut them in half, and you've got a really nice sheet of plastic that's very vivid, which is perfect for this type of ICM photography. Also, for creating backgrounds, if you're trying to create landscape type images with a sky, the blue glad trash bags or the glue ba glad recycle bags are really great for that objective. The last thing that you need to think about is the storage of these plastic bags. As you go around, you're going to find out really quickly that you're going to collect a lot of this stuff. But you've already got the solution to that in your arsenal of plastic bags for this type of photography. And here's mine. It's my recycle bag of tissue and plastic. So that's basically it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you come up with something interesting, share it on Facebook and drop me a line and let's continue this journey together. It's so much fun.